everybody, Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. It is Monday, December 2nd, and I am coming back to you today for my next in my Basics of Cross Stitch series. Today, we're gonna talk about fabric. And um, I'm gonna talk about the different, the main, most popular different types of cross stitch fabric that are out there. Um, we're going to talk about fabric counts. We're going to talk about the number of strands of floss you use for the different counts. We're going to talk about which needles you use. I will say up front, I am not an expert when it comes to fabric, and I will not be talking about all the different fabrics that are out there. It's just, um, there's too many. And like I said, I'm not an expert, but I do know a lot. And I do know a lot about the basics. And right now, that's what we're talking about, the basics. <clears throat> so this will give you a good foundation and a good understanding when you hear talk people talking about different counts, when you hear them talking about um, whether they're going over one or over two, what that really means, and just the different um, brands of fabrics that are out there. So just a way to familiarize your, you a bit with the most popular. <clears throat> Um, don't have any notes today, so it's just going to be you and I sitting here and chatting. If you have any questions, as always, let me know, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. So, um, yeah, short and sweet introduction. Let's get started. Basic types of cross-stitch fabric that you will hear mentioned. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ada. Ada is the one with the squares. Even weave, which is a bit of a misnomer, and I will talk about that in a second, and then linen. So, like I said, Ada is the one with the squares. Even weave. Basically, um, all fabrics, all cross-stitch fabrics are even weaves. And what that means is you have the same number of threads per inch. You know, when I talk about 32 threads per inch, 28 threads per inch. You have the same number of threads per inch along the warp as you do along the weft. I believe that's warp weft, I don't know. I always get that confused. But anyways, horizontal, vertical threads, same count. However many, how many, ever many strands per inch, it's the same both ways. Now, you will periodically run across fabrics that might have 32 one way, 33 the other way. That usually happens if in the hand dyeing process, there might may be some shrinkage. For the most part, they've started out as an even weave. So whether you're talking about the Adas or the that group in between that are kind of called even weaves or the linens, they are all even weaves because they are woven to have the same number of threads both directions. Okay, I think that the middle group, as I keep saying, um, are given the name even weave because the threads that are used in the weaving process are more, um, more even, more, what's the word I'm looking for? Here's another time I'm forgetting a word, um, consistent across the full piece of fabric than like you'll find in linen. And we were we are gonna look at all of these fabrics up close so you can see the differences. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and get you situated and we will start taking a look up close at the fabric. I'll be talking about all of them, talking about stitching one over two. We're gonna be showing, I'm gonna be showing comparisons of what those stitches look like. So let's get you turned around and let's talk fabric. All right, so let's start looking at some fabric up close. Now, I did want to say there are several major manufacturers of cross-stitch fabric, and um, I would say they probably produce, I don't know a percentage, but the majority of the fabrics you're out, seeing out there are going to be from um, one of three major companies. One is Charles Craft. And Charles Craft is usually in a tube. You can find that at the big box stores in a roll. Um, for all I know, Charles Craft may be made by one of the other two major companies, and that is Wichelt 
and Zweigart. For the most part, whether you are buying the fabric that is actually Zweigert or Wichelt, you know, like the, directly from them, or whether it is a fabric that a hand dyer bought and is dyeing, they're using a Zweigert base or they're using a Wichelt base. A large majority of the hand dyers do use the Zweigert base. You will know the Zweigert any Zweigert fabric, no matter the count, no matter the size, if it has the selvage edge on it, you're gonna see this, this orange stripe. That is Zweigert. So having said that, major companies, there's only a few of them that make them all. Other ones out there here and there, like I said, I wanna deal with the major ones. So let's start with Ada. This is a 14 count Ada. So as I said, it is the same number, it is an even weave. All of these are even weaves, so that means it's the same number, in this case, squares, horizontally as vertically. And of course, those squares are made up of individual threads. So this is a 14 count. This is an 18 count, and you can see, so that's 18 squares per inch or 14 squares per inch. You can see there is an appreciable difference in the size of the squares, right? There is 10 count, there's 11 count, there is um, 14, 16, 18, I think there's a 20, there's a 22. The 22 count with the squares is usually called hardanger. That is the fabric that is most usually used to do hardanger stitching, which is a different class of counted embroidery counted thread embroidery, but it is also basically little squares, but that is more usually called hardanger cloth and not Ada. But like I said, different counts, and later we'll talk about which, what, how many, how many strands of floss for the different counts of fabric. So that is your Ada, pure and simple. It's the stuff with the little squares. And like I said, 14 count, 18 count. <clears throat> Then you get into the even weaves. So here's what I was saying about the difference between an even weave and the linens. Again, they are all even weave. If you look closely, this is a Jobelin. So if you look closely, you can see that each thread used in the weaving is very consistent. If you look at a linen, you can see there are thicker threads there, and usually right next to the thicker threads, there are thinner threads because that thick thread <laughs> got mixed in with the, you know, it's kind of taking from Peter and giving to Paul kind of, kind of thing going on here. Um, so the, the linen will vary in size across the thread. It's still an even weave. The overall count is going to be the same, whether it's vertical or horizontal, but the, the linen has more inconsistencies and slubs. And there are also different qualities of linens that some have more slubs than others. Um, so that, that's all part of kind of the charm of linen. But let's go back to the even weaves a bit. There are multiple types of even weave like i said different companies um i don't remember which company makes what but the ones you are going to hear most often are jobelin or lugana i don't have a sign here that says lugana l-u-g-a-n-a -A. there's murano there's monaco and the main difference between the different even weaves is the content Lugana is a blend of cotton and I think like a viscose. Jobelin is a blend of cotton and rayon. Monaco, I believe, is 100% cotton. Murano, I'm not sure, but they're either, they're some kind of content of cotton and either 100% cotton or a blend of cotton. And so the spinning process for those fibers is more consistent than what happens with linen. And so that's why you get these very consistent threads 
on an even weave. And like I said, this is just a guess on my part, but that is why I think these are called even weaves because the threads are so even. Now you will notice <clears throat> on any given thread that it is itself plied. So this particular thread that came off of this fabric, you can see there's three plies that make up the thread. So in the spinning process, it is much, much more even. It stays more even. Um, like I said, the Jobelin is has some rayon in it. It is a little bit more um, floppy, I guess, than the Lugana. The Lugana tends to be the viscose content in this. Gives it a little more body, makes it a little bit less floppy. Each are beautiful to stitch on. So, um, you know, as you start trying different fabrics, you may find that you like the floppier better. One of the nice things about um, about the ones that are have the rayon content is that they don't wrinkle as much. So whenever, especially for those of us that stitch in hand, whenever you are, you know, wrinkling up the edges like this and holding them in your hand and you undo it, there's no wrinkles that are created, which is a totally different story with linen. If you've ever owned any linen clothes, you are aware how wrinkly linen can get. So that is another one of the beauties of one of these that has a cotton and something else blend. The Monaco that is 100% cotton. I don't use a lot of Monaco. I believe that is a Charles Craft product. Um, I would suspect that because it is cotton, it would wrinkle quite a bit. So we're gonna we're gonna do the comparison of the stitches in a little bit. Linen. So as I said, you have. The linen, again, an even weave. This happens to be a Zweigert. You can tell by the orange stripe. This one doesn't have the selvage on it, but I believe, oh, it does, but it's no orange stripe. This is probably a Wichelt. Which, back a minute to the even weaves. Even weaves, the counts you are going to find in the even weaves, and like I said, um, Jobelin, Lugana, Monaco, Murano, Linda, those are the ones you're going to hear most when it comes to even weaves. They come in 25 count, 28 count, 30 count, 32. I don't believe there may be a 36 count even weave, but it's not as popular, I don't think. 32, 28, 25 are your most popular counts of the even weaves. All right, so linens. As I said, you have the slubs, you have the different um, widths of the fabric, of the threads that are used to weave it. You can see here there's a thicker one and then some thinner ones right in here. That is um, just the beauty of linen, kind of the imperfections. You'll often get slubs like this. And there are finer linens that don't have as many of those and some that are more rustic. Again, it's something that you kind of come to appreciate with the linen, I guess. Um, linens, let me get a loose thread here. So I showed you the cotton, the even weaves that are, um, the threads are plied. The threads that are used to create the woven fabric are applied, and so that creates that nice, even fabric. The linens, I don't know whether you can see this, they are not plied. There is not more, they're, they're what's known as a single ply, so there's not more than one thread that goes into making up each of the threads of the linen fabric. So that is why you do have the thicker and the thinner. It's whatever the ply is as it's spun. And I don't know, I guess linen is flax, right? It starts as flax, I don't know. But however they spin this to create the fibers, the threads, however it comes, and you know, spinning itself is not an exact science. Spinners try to get, and of course they have machines to do th this kind of stuff, but um, you know, there's just, there's variations in the width of, of any strand that, that is being spun. And so that's why you have the variations in 
the linen because they are not multiple plies created, creating the, the threads. They are a single ply. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about the basics of the fabrics. Now we're going to go back and talk about number of strands. Now, let me see what I have on this. Not really any stitches. I was using this piece to, um, to experiment with different embroidery stitches many moons ago, and so that's what you see there. So let's talk about floss. I would say there are rules, and for every rule, there are people that break them because in cross stitch rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> but so what I'm going to tell you is what is in general, what people do, and then other things I've seen if I have seen other things. So in general, 14 count Ada, you are going to be using two strands of floss. And that is what I used here on my little experimental pieces when I was showing you the basics of cross stitch the other day, my last video. So two strands of floss is what is generally used on 14 count Ada. There are people that prefer three strands of floss that like a fuller, more filled in, more padded look. I would say there really isn't anybody who would use one strand of floss on 14 count Ada. That, that would just be too fine, too thin. As you go down into the lower counts, 11, 10, um, then you're going to use more. I think on 10 count, you would use four strands of floss. I will say right here at the very beginning that you are going to find a preference for what works for you. You may decide you like the three, that you like the more padded look. So as you grow, as you continue to stitch more, as you experiment with different sizes of fabric, you're going to experiment with different sizes of floss or different amounts of floss and decide what works best for you. A lot of people, when they're working on this kind of thing, you know, one of the benefits of starting with two strands is you can do that loop start that I showed you the other day. And you know, if that's the way you like to start, then you're going to use two strands, right? 18 count. 18 count is usually one strand. Now, at this point, I'm going to talk a little bit more about counts and how they relate to each other across the different types of fabric. So 14 count Ada, you are going over one square, right? One square is your X. That is equivalent to 28 count, whether it's even weave or linen, going over two of the fabric threads. So this square is the same size as this square. So 28 count, 14 count. So you take 28 because you're going over two strands of the fabric, two threads of the fabric instead of one, that equals 14 count. So the resulting finished size of your design on 14 count over one square is going to be the same as 28 count over one square right? 18 count Ada. The size of the square on the 18 count Ada is going to be the same size of the square on 36 count linen if you go over two, two threads. I actually didn't pull out any 36 count pieces and since that's what I work on most that's rather surprising. So my little squares here, this is Pretty Little Hawaii, is the same as the square on the 18 count Ada, over two strands on 36 count linen. 
So it's the same for any of the other counts. 32 count is the same size as 16 count Ada. So whenever you're, if you are working on a design and maybe they give you the finished design size for a 14 count Ada, you'll know it's the same. It's going to be the same if you use 28 count even weaver linen and stitch over two threads. Okay, make sense? All right, so 18 count Ada, 36 count linen, you're usually using one thread. Now again, there are people that like the more padded look. And so we'll use two strands of floss over two of the fabric threads on 36 count. I prefer a lighter look. Again, it's you're going to try different things and you're gonna see what works best for you. All right, 32 count. This is a 32 count where I am, and this is equivalent to 30 or to 16 count Ada. This is a 32 count where I am using one strand of floss over the two linen threads. And you can see, I don't know whether you can really tell on any of these colors really. It doesn't look sparse, in my opinion. I like the look of that. This is 32 count using two strands of floss. And so you can see that even though this looks okay, I'm happy with it, this definitely has a more padded, a more a fuller look than that, All right? And again, it's personal preference. This struck me as a more um, lighthearted, primitive design. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I didn't mind the one strand. I, I liked the one strand. I didn't want it too heavy. This is History of Sheep by Jardin Prouvé. It's a three-part series, and I, quite frankly, I prefer working with one strand of floss. This particular one, this is called Peonies. It is a Russian pattern. This pattern, you can see that there are some half stitches here that are just one strand. This pattern has a lot of that type of filling background stitching where it's just one strand half stitch. And so this is one of those times when you have to use two strands on a fabric that's big enough to handle two strands because otherwise you couldn't have the difference between the two strands and the one strand. Does that make sense? I had to do the crosses in two strands because I have stitches in this pattern that are one strand. And in order to see the difference, this is meant to be background lighter in order to see the difference. These are the leaves down here. Um, you need to have that differentiation in the in the amount of floss used. But those are both 32 count. Both look perfectly fine for the type of stitching that they are. So it, again, as much as there might be a rule that says, and I think I jumped over 28 count. We'll get back to that because I have a lot to talk about with 28 count. Um, most people use two strands on 32. This is kind of an in-between where you can see one strand looks perfectly fine as well. And that the same goes for the even weave type of cloth. So let's move these out of the way and let's talk about 28 count. Let me move my 36 count out of the way and my 18 count out of the way. So 28 count, let's get this turned around the correct way. Oops, I just sent something flying. 28 count, you are most often going to use two strands of floss, just like you use two strands of floss on 14 count. That is kind of the accepted way to do things. And really it's, it's unless you have some kind of Ada cloth that um, perhaps you got in a kit that just is, I don't know, more wide open holes that needs more coverage. I find Ada to be, or um, 14 count 
two strands on 14 count to be quite nice. This is 28 count Jobelin, as I've showed you before. Two strands fills it in quite nicely. Now, 28 count is also popular for over one stitching. Actually, let me get this because there's more to see and we love to see this one. All right, so 28 count, 28 count over two, over one. So if I were to do this design over one, it would be half the size, right? Make sense? Over one looks like this. So there's one, one thread there and I have one strand of floss that I'm using stitching over one strand, one thread of the fabric. Let's talk about that kind of um, nomenclature, I guess. You will see out there when you're cruising the Facebook groups, and I am going to, further down the line, probably not too much further down the line, do a separate video on all the social media aspects that are out there for cross stitch. But you will see people talking about, I've done this on 28 count Lugana, one over two. I've done this on 28, one over one. I've done this on 32 count two over one and they might have it written two over the word over one. They might have it two with an X one. Um, that is talking about how many strands of floss over how many um, threads of the fabric. So two strands of floss over one strand of the fabric, two strands of floss over two, so two by two, two by one, one by one, 14 count. I don't know whether people usually list 14 count, 18 count, like when you're doing Ada. It's kind of understood that you're gonna go over the one square. And they might, they will probably just say how many strands of floss they've used. You don't usually split the, the squares on Ada. Um, so let's see. Eight, or linen goes up to 56. You have 32, you have 28, 32, you have 30 linen. I mean, in general, there's other companies that have kind of odd sizes that aren't the most popular. 28, 32, 36, 40, 46, 56 is the highest linen that I've seen. Never worked with anything above 46, maybe someday. Over one, 25 and 28, I would say the most popular. This, my little thankful piece, is actually 32 count over one because I went a little crazy on Thanksgiving. So I don't know whether you can see the difference of the 28 count over one versus the 32 count over one. It's kind of min minuscule, but it's there. So that's kind of fun and teeny, teeny pieces, right? Just, just very, going over one just has a whole different feel to it than over two. I happen to love over one. Um, many people don't. And again, that's something you are going to find whether you like or not. All right, let's talk about um, needles then in relation to how many strands of floss. The main tapestry needles are size 24, size 26, and size 28. I believe those numbers are related to the gauge of the wire used to make needles. And this is a case where the lower number is a bigger needle and the higher number is a smaller needle. So I don't know whether I have different ones here. And of course, then you have petites and you have full size and that's kind of what I have in my hand. So this isn't a, a very good, um, a very good comparison. And I don't have one with a smaller eye, unfortunately. Um, for the most part, tapestry needles are distinguished by having big eyes. 
and that is to allow multiple strands of floss to fit through it. There are the DMC needles um, have the size of their eye is about half that size for whatever reason. Um, so 14 count, 28 count, anything larger, it's kind of hard to know whether to say larger or smaller when you're talking about fabric because the numbers go down, but the squares get bigger. <laughs> so um, when you get into the larger size of the squares, you're gonna use tw a size 24 needle, which is the uh, kind of a, the fattest, biggest needle for tapestry. You would probably use 24 on 14 count once you get to 16, 18, and so then that's 32 count. Um, 36 count, I use a 28. Um, I usually use 26 count on, or the size 26 needle on a, on 32. Um, sometimes on the bigger or on 36, but for the most part, I'll use a size 28 needle, which is the, the skinniest um, on 36 and above. And the, for the most part, on, on most of the standard needles, the eye size is the same. It does get a little skinnier as you go into the higher sizes. Um, and so that's where, you know, you're only using one strand of floss. So that is kind of the, you, the floss fits the size of the needle, basically. Um, let me see if I have one of the DMC ones on here. I think that's the DMC right there. And then this is a Pat Carson. These are both size 28. Oh, that might be a 26. It's totally going by feel. But if you can see the eye, see how much bigger this one is than this one. The small one is the DMC brand. The big one is the Pat Carson. I don't know why DMC makes their eyes so small. I still can get one strand of floss in through it, so I'm not, this is this is what I use for pretty much all of my full coverage over one, and I have no problem getting one strand of floss through there. The size of the needle also relates to um, the size of the holes you're dealing with on the fabric. So obviously how much fiber is in those holes, how easy it is to get down through. If you ever have a doubt about the size of your needle, whether it's right, it's better to go down a size. So if you're using a 26, go down to a 24. The reason being is it's going to open up the hole more so it causes less fray on your floss. It allows your, um, your floss to lay better. It creates less tangling. I will be linking below a link to an article by Mary Corbett. Mary Corbett is the author of the blog Needle and Thread. She's been around for ages. She is an expert in the needlework field and she has a ton of articles on needles and when to use what. But I will be linking to one in particular that tells you how to choose the correct needle for what you're doing because she has some tips that are very, very helpful. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to cover today. Talked about needles, talked about over one, needles in relation to floss, and then the different sizes of fabric. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Anything that you think I should have covered that I didn't, I see I am over 30 minutes and I didn't expect to go that long, so there was actually more here to cover than I thought. Um, yeah. Let me know any questions next week. I will be back with Let's Talk Floss. So um, stay tuned for that. And I hope to talk to you soon. Have a great week. Take care.